four weeks ago, Sue Jakeman wrote the opening lines for our circuit newsletter, and they went like this. Both in my career and in my personal life, I have spent many hours listening to people, not just sitting passively and listening, but actively showing that I was listening to what they were saying, that I had heard and that they were understood. The lectionary reading for today is 1 Samuel, chapter 3, verses 1 to 10. The Lord calls Samuel. Samuel's mother had taken him to the temple as a small boy, and he'd grown up there, serving the Lord, and working for an old, blind priest called Eli. It was her way of thanking God for her child. It's such a well-known passage that I'm going to leave you to read it for yourselves. But here's a quick refresher from Ella, Donna, Alana, and with help from the handmade puppets. You called me, didn't you? I didn't call you. Lay down and go back to sleep. You called me again, didn't you? My son, I did not call you. Lay back down and go to sleep. You did call me, didn't you? My son, I did not call you. So if you hear a voice, you say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Samuel was actively showing that he was ready to listen. But what was it that God wanted to say that was so important that he called him three times? Well, it was a warning for Eli. He was going to be punished along with his family. They'd been misbehaving and Eli had done very little to stop them. He'd been warned, so it was no surprise to him when Samuel told him what God had said. As for Samuel himself, he continued to grow up in the temple and became a well-respected prophet of God. But that's not what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about listening. How good a listener are you? I'm not. And my husband likes to remind me from time to time that I was given two ears and one mouth for a reason. I get distracted. My mind starts wandering. And more than that, I'm prone to interrupt. Our Bible reading talks about preparing to listen and gives us a few clues on how to do this. First, being in the right frame of mind and the right environment, not in a busy, noisy place where you'll get easily distracted or interrupted, but in a quiet space. Our church buildings are ideal, but unfortunately we can't all use them at the moment. But we have to remember that God is everywhere around us and keen to have a conversation. So let's not use that as an excuse. In the book of Kings, when Elijah had fled to the wilderness in fear of his life, God chose to speak to him, not in the mighty wind, earthquake or fire, but in the calm and in a quiet whisper. Have you heard God talking to you in a whisper, as Samuel did? Or maybe you've just had a strong feeling or a thought. And if you're not sure if it's God talking to you, is there someone you can talk to about it and share your experience and ask their view? And finally, when you've heard God talking and you've listened properly, heard and understood what he said, what do you do about it? Surely to do nothing would be like asking a good friend for advice and then not taking it. In the December newsletter, Sue went on to say, listening is such an important skill and listening teaches us too to be better people. Psalm 32 verse 8 
tells us what will happen if we listen. It says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. And surely that's worth listening for. Amen. Dear God, thank you for listening to us whenever we pray. Help us to spend time listening to you. We know you speak in so many ways to our friends, family and the people around us. In the things that we look at each day from our thoughts and dreams and ideas. Through the amazing world you created us for us to live in and especially through books like the Bible. Teach us to stop and make more time when we are busy to learn how to listen whenever we pray. In Jesus' name, Amen.
like to thank Eli and Samuel for their help with this production.